everybody, one of the flicking feathers again today, and I'm tying an ostrich deceiver. It's a really good variation of the lefties deceiver. The ostrich is lovely and mobile, um, and so it swims better at lower speeds than ha saddle hackle, but also stays together, doesn't collapse um, when you fish it at higher speeds as well, so it's a really versatile pattern and well worth trying. As always, we'll stick a materials list in the description, along with a link to the Patreon page for anyone who wants to support the channel, which will get you access to the monthly fly tying classes, the recordings of them, and you can also enter the giveaways. Right, so I've got my hook and my vise. It's an SL12, size 2 aught in this case, but you can tie these from about a size 2 up to 6-0, 8-0, up to yourself really. You can make quite a big fly if you can get big enough ostrich. And I've just run on some white Danville's flat waxed. Now for the tail I'm going to put in a wee bit of bucktail just to support the ostrich and make it sort of foul proof. And I'm taking it from the base of the tail. I want some of these wee short thick hairs. Um, and I don't need much at all. Yeah, I've got just a wee bunch. I'm going to, by the time I clean this, so I take out all the rubbish. And if there's any really long hairs, I'll sort of just realign them. So I've got something like that, and I'm, I'm going to just make it. I only want like a shank length or slightly more than that at the back. It's just a, just a very small support. So tie these in and I'm taking my tight wraps towards the hook eye here so, so that I don't flare this, the tips of the bucktail too much. I'm going to come in, trim that away. I'll come back and then Just a sort of light wrap, gives you a nice flat base. I'm going to get my ostrich. Now, this ostrich is quite good on this side. There don't seem to be many broken tips or any, but don't worry. Right? If you get broken tips, it doesn't matter. Right? Like so this, if I show you the other side of the feather, a lot of these are kind of ratty, but you can just, if that's what you've got, you can just snap it. And that's that's still a fine, very usable feather for this kind of thing. And I'm going to take a bunch, maybe 12, 14 feather fibres. And see how they line up. I don't want them like a paintbrush, but also I don't want any super long or super short hairs. So just, just come in you can hold those couple of longer ones and then bring them in so that you've got something kind of like that like you've got some maybe on this size of fly I've got maybe an inch between the longest and the shortest ostrich feathers tail length just use your existing fly if you want. I tied this yesterday, so I'd so I check where it's coming to. So they're all the same. Coming back about here. And then just, before you even take a wrap of thread, just sort of push that ostrich over. So it goes all the way around the hook, then take a light turn, and then tighten down. See how you're sitting. Make sure you've got it all the way around. And it's going to give you a lovely swimming tail. I'm a big fan of ostrich. It's very, very mobile in the water. Surprisingly durable. Um, it's, 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 it's a really good material. We bit a flash. Now, I'm not putting too much flash in this version, but you can make them flashier if you like. 
using polar flash, which is just a silver pearl blend here that, that's 2001 is the colour code. And unlike maybe we often do with like the standard deceiver, I'm not going to have the flash coming behind the the ostrich. I'm just tying it in on my side that it's uneven and it's coming to like the the back of the ostrich. Got a couple of wraps just to secure it, put it over the far side. Hold everything down. Just try and get a nice sort of spread of flash around and in amongst that. And then it'll just sort of trim these at different lengths. Again, just coming to the back of the ostrich so they're the same length. Nothing's, there's no any flash sticking out the back. I'm just going to tidy this up. You could, if you want, put. Um, body braid or something here but there's no need for it really I just like to get a bit of head cement just to protect this and then while I get my bucktail ready that'll be nearly dry I'll just run my thread through it once and back Just to make sure, good coverage, good tough fly. So, I'm going to take my my bucktail for the collar. I like it sort of in the the top to mid third. It will depend on your tail. This is a really nice sort of fluffy, soft tail, and um, you can see it's it's been split in borax. It's not been mass produced like a in a washing machine. Um, and I'm going to get a decent sized bunch. Now, the deceiver, and this is something, I mean, I've seen a video Lefty talking about this as well. A lot of folks say that it's got to be really thin, that it's got to be really thick. But actually, you should put the collar on it at a thickness that suits where you're fishing, right? If you need something that's to sort of sit up in the water or push a bit of water, you put a heavier collar on it. If you want something thinner and slinkier, then you put a lighter collar. It's it's as simple as that really. It doesn't have to be a certain way. It just has to suit your fishing. So if you're fishing maybe slightly stained waters, or you're fishing for something that likes to attack from below and you want your fly to sit up, more bucktail. Right? If you're fishing really clear water and you want your fly to cut through the surface a bit quicker, less bucktail. So the length I'm coming back maybe halfway into the bucktail. Just measure that and I'm going to cut it at a slight angle in my hands. I'm just going to sit it on top. Take three turns and all I do is I just push it around tighten up. Right. You can, if you want, uh, tie it in in separate bunches, but I've found this to be very effective. I've got a nice even spread there, very quickly, very easily. Olive back, uh, same section of the bucktail. Basically the same thing, just sort of clean it, make sure you've got no rubbish in there. Measure. Cut it. We're a bit steep on my angle there. Put it in, same again, just get it tied in. You can come up into these cut ends, keep everything nicely on top. 
We'll just hit it with my thumb just to sort of widen it a wee bit. And there we go. Then the last thing is a bit of crystal flash for a throat. You can use other flash if you like. Cut a whole length because I'm going to do a few of these. What I like to do is offer it in. Catch it right at the eye. Fold it back. And just tie it over. And then I can come in and trim it. Set that aside for the next fly. And I'll just tidy up this head. And then whip finish. That's it. Once it's the second whip finish, it'll get the head will get two or three coats of head cement. Make it nice and tough and shiny. And it'll give you a nice, very durable fly that you can catch plenty of fish on and fresh and salt water, this works for everything. So there you go, I hope that was useful. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please uh, remember to give me a thumbs up below and subscribe to the channel. Take lines guys, bye.